welcome back to Two Folk Middle School. I thought we'd do a little bit of a different video today. I'm jumping on the trend of doing this responding to your assumptions about me video. I don't know who originally started doing these, but I think one of the reasons that they're like interesting to watch and then interesting to like interact with from a viewer's perspective is because, you know, like content creators put out certain portions of their life on the internet, but obviously it's edited to a certain degree, and so sometimes you might be putting like vibes out there that maybe you don't even realize you're putting out there. So this is kind of a way for like other people to just like say what they see, I guess, I don't know. So I put this out on Instagram, and then I took some pictures, I took some screenshots of what you guys said. <laughs> All right, I think I found the beginning. Stuff like this is always a little bit risky to put out there because you never know what people are gonna say, but you're asking for it. But the very first assumption that I got was being a mom doesn't come naturally to you. So I thought I would take this one right out the gate because I feel like um, not a lot of moms get to talk about the things that don't come naturally to them. Maybe because you feel like by admitting that that it, it makes you a bad mom or something, I don't know. but. I just want to let you know that for me, right out the gate, things didn't come naturally. Like giving frickin' birth. Uh, I was in labor for 54 hours and then I had to have an emergency c-section. I have a uh, birth story video up on my channel that I will never watch again because it's too traumatizing for me. My husband and my mother-in-law were there with me at the hospital and I mean I was so out of it but they were really really angry at how we were treated in the hospital and my husband always says it was the best day of his life and the worst day of his life because he thought he was gonna lose both of us i mean pregnancy and birth in general is just like a really really hard thing and for some people it's very easy and they get pregnant easily and have pretty quick and simple births and all of that um but for me at least the the giving birth part was definitely not easy at all. We were exhausted by the time that we brought Jensen into this world and then he was not a baby that liked to sleep. Definitely didn't like to sleep by himself. He wanted to sleep on our chests all the time. He loved like the skin to skin contact. Um, and so in order to get him to sleep, one of us would have to stay awake and lay on the couch and let him sleep on us and be like a human mattress and um, you know, maybe people would say like, let them just cry it out. But when you have like a three day old baby that you're trying to keep alive and you are trying to keep yourself alive and you've just been sliced open and you can't even stand or walk, it's rough. And then um, breastfeeding was really, really hard for us. I had some kind of like a hormonal reaction. And I mean, everybody has a hormonal reaction. It's like the letdown and all of that. But every time that Jensen would latch, my um, temperature would just skyrocket and I broke out in hives and it was horribly, horribly painful. He was like a shark trying to chew me to death. And I went to a lactation consultant who was one of the biggest bitches I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and I went to a breastfeeding support group where somebody inadvertently stole my stroller. A lot of the things early on were very hard and yeah, I would say they they didn't feel natural at all. They felt horrible. But at the same time, it's so weird because you just love your baby. And, and maybe this isn't true for everybody, but I connected instantly with Jensen and he was just so cute and so wonderful. And I was just obsessed with him. And I did want to be around him all the time, which is good because they need to be around you all the time. Um, but physically, I was so, so exhausted and so ruined, basically. And I could also feel myself uh, starting starting to get pretty low. Um, I'm a very, like, just, like, even keel type of person most of the time. I don't have a lot of highs or lows. Just mentally, I'm pretty stable. So when I could feel myself starting to... Uh, sink pretty low, you, you know, like maybe as a result of a lot of the hormones and the nursing and the sleep deprivation and the recovery from major surgery and 
all of those things. Uh, I remember thinking that I loved being a mom, I loved Jensen, but envisioned my future, like, uh, you know, six months ahead of that time. And when I thought about being a mom who still was breastfeeding, it made me not at all excited to be a mom. It made me dread motherhood and dread anything that was upcoming. So after about a month and a half for my mental health, I switched off of breastfeeding. That was also the time that I went back to work as well and we are on a rotating schedule and I was gonna be brand new at this new school and Jensen was gonna be going into daycare and I just did not know how to make all of that work and also keep breastfeeding. I was so overwhelmed. So I remember like holding Jensen's little body, like holding him up and being like, okay, in order for me to be a good mom, we're not gonna do this anymore. We're gonna do bottles, you're gonna get the food that you need, but I can't be a good mom to you and a happy mom while we're doing this because it just made me so low and so negative about the future. So yeah, there were definitely things that did not come naturally and I had to like make decisions based on my work situation and my physical health and my mental health and I mean even things like the fact that we live in an apartment with a lot of other people, you know, like on the walls on the sides of us and below us, um, we didn't want to let Jensen just cry throughout the middle of the night because there are like kids who live below us that had to get up for school the next day and we felt really bad like waking up the whole apartment complex in the middle of the night if Jensen was crying really loud so you know we made decisions with like his sleeping and stuff not necessarily based on what we really wanted to do but just like based on our situation so there's so much that goes into parenting and now Jensen right now is three, he's like three and a half, and I love this stage. I love the fact that he's talking so much more. Um, he definitely has like his bratty side, but he has this really, really sweet side too. And him and I are very similar. Like my husband is always kind of like, how did I get a child like this? Because Jensen is so different from how Derek was when he was little, but he's exactly like me. Kind of a brat, but really smart and really funny. Definitely knows how to get what he wants and he's really creative and he like acts out everything uh, that he sees. He loves to act out like SpongeBob and Cars and Toy Story and he's just so fun to be around. Right now I'm letting him play on the iPad so that I can do little things like this with like an hour of my day, you know? So um, I wouldn't necessarily know how to define what it means for like motherhood to come naturally. But all I know is that I love being a mom. I love Jensen. I love being a parent with my husband. Jensen is the most hilarious person I've ever met in my life. And I love hanging out with him. And there were a couple of other ones, I'm not sure if I can find them, about um, like wanting more kids and I am totally ready. I want another one. I want a sibling for Jensen. I just want another kid. Um, so that's definitely something that we are like working towards because um, it would be a little bit hard to have another baby in this apartment. It was hard to have one here. It would be harder to have two and then we have to like save up and like figure out maternity leave and disability insurance and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to be really focused on that for a while, plus freaking daycare, Jensen's daycare is like $1,600 a month and so we cannot possibly afford to have two children in daycare at the same time. So it's really just a money issue at this point I think, but um, yeah, I would love to have another one and we are trying to find a way to make it work. I promise I will not spend that much time on the rest of them, but I thought that one deserved a little bit of my time. So um, the next one says, uh, I assume that your husband is always waiting on you to finish getting ready before leaving. I would totally assume this to be true as well, but I feel like it's always the opposite. Maybe it's just in my perception, but I feel like Okay, well, I am pretty much like late every single time I go anywhere, but for whatever reason, whenever we go somewhere as a family, I am on time somehow. And then Derek is always giving himself a haircut. Like I'll open the door like five minutes before we're about to 
supposed to leave for somewhere and he's like turned the bathroom into a barber shop and he's giving himself a haircut and he still needs to like clean up and take a shower and I'm like oh, are you kidding me we need to leave so I just don't bother to check anymore I just get ready and then I just hang out until he is ready and we go when we go this one says you don't actually enjoy teaching middle schoolers as much as you show on your channel. I think I enjoy teaching middle schoolers more than I show on my channel. I don't really get to show that very much since I talk about a lot of other things besides my middle schoolers, but um, I love them. <laughs> my kids are so great and I work at such a fun school and we get to do so many interesting things all the time and I love teaching history and I love teaching English and we have so many great conversations. Um, the day before Christmas break. We had this kind of like weird scheduled day where we got to watch a bunch of them perform in the holiday concert and then we just had like short class periods for the rest of the day and we just kind of got to play around and like exchange little gifts and stuff and it was such a fun day. I was like wishing that we weren't going on break except for not really but I just kept thinking like I'm gonna miss you guys like I can't believe we have to be apart for two weeks. Oop, my mom is calling. Remind me to call her back. Oh, here's one. You want to have another kid in the future, but not anytime soon. So yeah, we, we do. We just have to like set up our lives to, to bring in another one. Um, this one's interesting. You are pretty picky and discerning about who, who you allow into your inner circle slash tribe. I would say that that is true. Um, I have quite a few friends from like high school and college that I am still friends with and I really love to maintain those relationships and so sometimes I feel a little bit guilty like bringing in new friends if I feel like I'm neglecting old friends. Like I feel bad hanging out with somebody new if you know I haven't called somebody old in a long time. I'm definitely extroverted and I love to hang out with people but I think this is accurate that I'm, I'm a little picky about who I hang out with. I need people to be about the same things that I'm about or at least like I, I need people to have like kind of similar passions like if I'm hanging out with somebody of course we want to like relax and kick back and chill but I also want to talk with people about like our goals for the future and like what are we going to accomplish and who can we help today and like how can we like solve a problem and what have you been learning recently and what have you been reading and how can we support each other like as moms or as parents or in our marriages like I'm a little intense so I need people to be uh, at least like slightly intense where we can have these kind of deep conversations and like I want the people that I'm friends with to like make me a better person and I want to help them become a better person and help them achieve their goals so like if people want to hang out just to hang out I'm like Okay, but what are we gonna do? <laughs> what are we gonna accomplish here? So I think that's why it feels that way to me, yeah. Speaking of that, it says, seems like you had some badass roommates in college. From one of my roommates in college, and I did. Somehow I got really lucky, because I had so many roommates in college and I never had like a horrible, weird roommate experience. I feel like almost everybody did have a weird roommate experience. If you've ever had a weird roommate experience, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> I was in college for seven years, I guess, like just for my bachelor's degree. My first year I had one roommate and she was super nice. My second year I had seven roommates. There were eight of us all together and we had one bathroom and they were all amazing. I still like kind of keep in touch with most of them and then like my third, fourth-ish years we had like four or five of us living in this apartment. A few people kind of like um, rotated in and out and they were all amazing. I'm still good friends with a lot of them and then my sixth and seventh year that was when I had this roommate and there were like three of us that always stayed in that apartment and then a couple people rotated in and out but I always had great roommates. They were always so fun and I loved like I really do miss that as much as I love being married and my husband is a really fun roommate as well but I do miss those days of just like living with my friends and just like any time you came home from anything like your friends are there and you could just get to hang out and if you want to like go to a movie or like go get a burrito or something like there's somebody there that will probably go with you it was awesome i kind of miss those days this one says you see yourself as a classroom teacher forever uh i think this is accurate as well i really love doing all this stuff on the side like i love um doing youtube and like helping teachers this way and making um, curriculum on Teachers Pay Teachers to also 
help teachers and then um, even through Instagram, like being available as a resource. So I really like helping other teachers in that way, but I don't think that I would want to be like a TOSA or a coach or whatever they call them, you know, like, or a principal or anything like that. Like, I really love being in the classroom and I think that that's what helps me to be a good, like, presenter or curriculum writer or whatever. I don't see myself leaving the classroom anytime soon, so that is correct. <laughs> this is a funny one. You and your husband don't ascribe to traditional gender roles. I guess we don't. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're just too busy and too practical to even like consider what that would even mean. I still do a lot of like the cooking and cleaning just cause I'm the one who cares about that kind of stuff, I guess. <laughs> and you know what's funny is that like a few of the guys that I dated before I met my husband that I thought were like, you know, possible people to have a future with, like ended up being such conservative, like super strict with gender role type of people. I didn't really see that coming for them, but oh my goodness, like now, seeing them on Facebook or whatever, we would not have gotten along and I'm so glad things didn't work out with any of those people, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, let's do another one. You don't struggle with behavior management in your classroom. On one level, I kind of don't, but it's only because, it's not because of me. It's just because in general, we have a pretty positive culture at our school and we have pretty great behavior from most of our students. A lot of them are held to pretty high standards at home, um, as far as like respecting adults. And then on the other hand, like there's just not a lot that bothers me. So I don't have a ton of rules in my classroom. I feel like I should make a new behavior management in my classroom video because I have a really old one that I made when I was a pretty new teacher and working in a school with a really different culture. Um, and now, yeah, I just, like the main thing that I care about and that I do struggle with with some students is at the very beginning of class, we do our little like Lin-Manuel Miranda chant thing. And this is just so that students have like a chance to settle in, to pay attention. I don't tell them to stop talking. I just do our little, you know, good morning routine thing. And that's kind of like the cue to like, okay, like wrap up your conversations listen to what I have to say. And we do our Google Slides at the beginning of each class and I just kind of walk them through what we're gonna be doing today, what they need to know. But for the most part, I don't really lecture. Um, I just have something for us to do and I pretty much release them a few minutes after class begins to like get started on this thing. So I want them to listen to me as I am explaining what we're gonna do for the day. So if students can't give me their attention for like three minutes at the beginning of class, then I have an issue. So this year that's been like the main thing. Like I, you know, on my board I have like, pay attention with your face. When I'm giving you instructions, pay attention with your face. You're not talking, you're not digging in your bag, you're not looking out the window. You need to listen for a few minutes because that's all I'm asking for of you. So that's the thing that I like sometimes struggle to maintain. So we, all of my students need a big reminder of that at the beginning of, you know, next semester. Ah, here's a good one. You are a vegan. I'm not, but I'm lazy with my food and I don't eat um, dairy. I just don't like it. It's not for any like larger reason. I just think it's gross. <laughs> like almost on like a intellectual level, like it just like grosses me out. Um, and I am too lazy to cook meat in our house. I'm afraid that it's gonna go bad, so I don't cook it very often. So sometimes we get it when we go out, but for the most part, we just don't eat a lot of meat and dairy. So it probably does look like we're vegan <laughs> a lot of the time. You read for hours every day at night. That is pretty much the time when I read. Like I'll read before bed or just kind of like in the evenings when Jensen's kind of winding down. And I don't wanna be on my phone around him, you know, like at night. I don't want to just like be sitting here like this, even if I'm kind of like working or whatever. I just don't want him to see me doing that. So I'd rather him see me reading. So I do tend to get like an, maybe almost an hour of reading in every night. Not every night, but most nights. That you and Derek don't have a lot of time together as we hardly see him featured. Well, that's kind of like half true. Um, I do feel like we don't get a ton of time together because um, we're both teachers and then he is a coach. So like today's Saturday and he's coaching at a tournament. So um, probably like three weekends a month. He's at a basketball tournament on Saturdays and Sundays. 
And so, you know, while he's gone, that's when I have time to do things like make videos or maybe be on Instagram a little bit more. But he just does not like to be on my channel or on Instagram. He just doesn't really like to be on social media. He's a much more private person and he doesn't want to put himself out there. So when he is home, I don't really go on social media. Like if he's here, I'm not gonna make a YouTube video because that would like cut into time that I would have with him or um, you know, when I'm hanging out with him, I don't go on Instagram all that much. Maybe a little bit, I'll try to like sneak him in there. Or, like, I mean, he'll take pictures with me and stuff, but he'd just like rather not, but I force him every so often. He's super supportive of my channel and just like everything too cool for middle school. And he always is like thinking of new ideas for me and like, t-shirt ideas or like conference ideas. And he always wants to help me like build the business side of it. Um, he just doesn't want to be like on camera. So it is true that we don't get to spend tons of time together, but also when we are spending time together, I'm just not doing social media. So that's why you don't really see him on here very much. Oh, this is a nice one. The other teachers and admin look to you for help or advice. Um, sometimes, yeah, and I I love giving advice. I'm an oldest sibling. I'm the oldest of three girls, and so I feel like I was just like made for advice. I'm kind of in older sister mode like all the time, so um, occasionally, you know, admin will ask my opinion about something that they're thinking about doing or like other teachers will come run an idea by me and I love that. I think that's so much fun. And I like that our staff is close enough that you know we can do that. And I um, have plenty of questions and advice to ask of other teachers at my school too. Oh, this one's funny. That you wish you'd pursued singing more. Occasionally I do, but I just know that <laughs> that wasn't gonna be something that worked out for me. So I really love singing in choirs. Um, I used to sing with my husband. He has a hip hop album and I sang backup for him for quite a while when we used to do that kind of stuff. I just really, really love singing backup. So I like singing in choirs. I like doing background vocals. I know a lot of people now who do that and like live that life and they're background vocalists and they are, goodness, 50 times better than I'll ever be. And it's, it's a tough career and like personality wise, it's just, it would be so stressful for me to like have to just like gig all the time and wonder like where my next paycheck was coming from. Like I have a hard enough time budgeting on a really reliable paycheck. So to have to do that for gigging would just be like so stressful to me. So I, I probably wasn't cut out for that life, but I can dream, I can dream. Um, <laughs> you stay up way too late and then have a hard time getting up in the morning, AKA me. 100% accurate, I do that pretty much every single day. <laughs> That's always my New Year's resolution too, is to go to bed earlier, get up on time, but something in my circadian rhythm like just prevents me from doing that, it's just so hard. I just wanna do everything at nighttime, I don't know why. You're on your way to financial freedom. I am gonna claim that, girl. Yes, you can't cook. I don't know if I can really. I have like five or six kind of go-to things that I make, but I don't even know if that's really considered cooking. I do a lot of like soups and pastas, but I don't make like five course meals or anything like that. And I don't think I could, but I like to kind of like put food together if that's a thing. <laughs> I feel like the hardest part about cooking is like the grocery shopping ahead of time and then the cooking, well, and then the meal planning before that and then the cleaning of the kitchen and then the storing away of the leftovers and like cooking is just such a, a long process. And in a tiny kitchen, it's not the most enjoyable thing, but I can feed myself and my family. Um, you're super organized. A couple people said that, oh, gosh, I, in my mind, am very organized and I wish that I were more organized. It's just hard when you like live with other people, especially tiny people. And my husband, who's a bit of a pack rat and has a lot of stuff. If it were up to me, I would like purge. Well, I would just like purge all his stuff, you know? Definitely not fair, but. <laughs> That would make it really easy. Um, yeah, I would like to be more organized than I am and it actually frustrates me a lot that I can't be as organized as I wanna be. But our apartment's kind of always a disaster. It's a disaster right now. So Jensen needs to get on that. You make decent money teaching slash side hustles if you can afford nails, fair trade fashion, and daycare. I do have a lot of budget videos up right now and I just uploaded one for the month of December. So yeah, I usually don't have many complaints about like the amount of money that we make. 
uh, but just the expenses that we have and just like what it costs to live our lives <laughs> is a lot. So I need to do a better job of budgeting, but um, I did my own nails actually. I'm, I am taking a break from my fancy nail habit. And if you watch my um, December budgeting video, you'll see like half of the fair trade clothes that I got, I got for free, which is great. Definitely one of the perks of doing Instagram and YouTube and stuff. And daycare is just a freaking racket, man. Daycare is just so expensive, but there's, what, what can I do? <laughs> what can I do about that? A lot of them are about like sleep habits, like that you get about three hours of sleep a night because you are so busy. That's true, I don't get very much sleep during the week nights but right now it's christmas break and actually me and jensen both slept in that's the good thing about jensen is that he sleeps in he's like us where he loves to stay up late and sleep in but um he doesn't like wake me up in the morning super early and like force me out of bed like i have to drag him out of bed someone said you are a morning person and I don't know where that assumption would come from because I so badly want to be a morning person and I am just not. A few people said like that you never just sit down and rest, you always seem to be going, going, going. And yes, it is very hard for me to just sit down and rest. If I do sit down, then I'm like, okay, well, I could be reading or I could be like responding to emails or I could be educating myself in some way by like watching a documentary. I could be replying to Instagram comments or messages. I feel like I just don't really enjoy like sitting down and resting in the sense of like not doing any work. And this is probably something I need to like work out within myself, but I feel more rested like after I've accomplished something, you know? So that's probably like a vicious cycle though, because then like I have to keep accomplishing things in order to feel like I rested. But yeah, I don't, I don't really just like sitting there doing nothing. We'll do a couple more here. We're starting to lose the light a little bit. I think I want to take Jensen to the park in a couple minutes. So We'll just do a few more. Oh, this one's nice. One says, you have a lot of friends. I really like to meet people. Like I, I do a lot of stuff, you know, like I, um, where we go to church and I like volunteer for a lot of things and meet a lot of new people. And I'm in like, you know, my new choir. I just joined a new gym. And so I like meeting people at all of those things. But like somebody else said, um, I, I try to find people that like really align with my like mission in life or passion in life or whatever. We've got a couple of coffee ones here. This one says you drink your coffee black instead of adding flavors or sugar. I wish that I did that because it'd be more healthy, but I have sugar in my coffee. Nothing else though. I don't really add like flavors or dairy because I don't like dairy, but in my iced Americanos, I get vanilla, which is just like sugar, right? Just liquid sugar. This one says you have the Starbucks app and get excited for red cup season. I actually don't know what red cup season is, but I do have the Starbucks app. But again, I'm just like very boring with my with my order. I get a grande iced Americano like pretty much every single time because it's just like straight espresso into my body. Huh, this one's funny. You've never smoked. That is true. I have never smoked anything in my life. <laughs> never even tried it because it just has zero appeal to me. A lot of things I've never done like not because I have like this iron will or anything, but just because it doesn't appeal to me in any way. <laughs> for every problem, you also have a Mariah Carey song response for it. This is true. I often find myself thinking, there's got to be a way to connect this world today. Come together to relieve the pain. There's just got to be a <laughs> I assume that you hate roller coasters. I do. I do not want to be on a roller coaster. <laughs> but I do want to go on the like Hogwarts one at Universal Studios. That one seems really fun. I still haven't been to the whole like Hogwarts Harry Potter land thing, but I do want to go. Ah, I assume that you don't drink. I don't, or at least like very rarely. I used to, but um, my husband doesn't drink at all. And it's not something that I really enjoy and it's not something that we want to put a bunch of money towards. <laughs> and I don't really like the person that I am when I have had alcohol, to be perfectly honest. So uh, yeah, for me, it's just better if I don't drink. <laughs> You'd argue Glitter the movie was good. It was, it's a masterpiece. What a story, what an acting job. I'm gonna watch that right now. <laughs> um, you never stress the small stuff. I think that's true. Um, because I'm so concerned all the time with like huge things, you know, like 
human trafficking and politics and human rights and equality and anti-bias education and anti-racism and like all of these things that I care immensely about. So then if there's like a little squabble happening on like Instagram or something like that, I'm just like, how do you have time to care about stuff like that? Or in my classroom, like we have things to get done. Like I've got big stuff that we need to talk about. So then if there's like a little issue going on. I'm just like, who cares, man, who cares? Get over it and let's change the world. That you have nice penmanship. I think I actually do. My mom has really nice handwriting and my grandma has really nice handwriting and all of us have very similar handwriting. I think that, I don't know if that's something you can like pass down genetically, but I think we just saw each other's writing. You know, like my mom saw hers and kind of copied it and I saw my mom's and kind of copied it. So we all have really nice handwriting. <laughs> oh, this one's interesting. The JCPenney ad was hard to do since you preach ethical clothing. I definitely love being a platform for ethical clothing brands because I know that they have so much less money to put towards advertising so you know for years and years I've always been happy to help promote these fair trade clothing companies that I find and so you know I've just always done that for free and because I'm you know the Enneagram type one like I'm super hard on myself and I'm very like rigid in my thinking and so at first I was kind of like oh I don't know if I should do JCPenney I don't know if that's like exactly 100% in line with every single thing that I've ever said in my entire life. And my husband was kind of like, um, actually it seems like a really great opportunity and something really fun for you to do. And you should like keep an open mind. And I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that I got to work with them. It was really cool to see like the fashion industry and the advertising industry from a little bit more of like an inside perspective. And we got to have such meaningful conversations. Like I was a little bit surprised about that. Um, I wonder if I can find the link still to where they had like um, me and Vera and Juan and Amanda, they did our interviews. Like we got to talk about the things that we are really passionate about and really care about in education. And it was so cool to kind of move those conversations from something that happens with like a few people on Instagram into like a more national stage. That was so, so much fun and I loved that video actually. I need to, to find that and just save it because it was one of my like favorite things that I've ever gotten to make. And then the commercial that me and Vera got to do was so much fun. It was so amazing to go to New York and just to get to like meet all of these different creative people that work together on projects like this. Like, I'm glad that my husband convinced me to keep a more open mind because it was wonderful. They were great people to work with and I got to learn so much and it was just like overall wonderful and something I'm so proud that I got to be a part of. Okay, well a lot of the other ones are just like kind of similar to ones that we already talked about. So thank you so much to everybody who submitted an assumption. I just thought this would be kind of a fun video. And so many people just took an opportunity to say like that you are a really great, wonderful person and just said really nice things and put those into my inbox, which was really nice. So thank you for participating and making this video with me, man. I need to heat up the rest of this coffee and then go to the park. It's like a perfect park day, but we do need coats because it's cold, but it's sunny. Thank you again for watching everybody and I will see you in my next video. Bye.